about NHS middle free interview questions and answers so if this is your first time in my channel kindly like comment share and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be obviously going to be posting a lot of things related to this so for you not to miss out kindly click on the um, sus uh, subscribe button and don't forget to on the notification button as well so you know whenever I post a new video so if you are my returning subscriber thank you I really appreciate the support thank you for watching my videos so today as I said earlier I'm going to be talking about mini free NHS interview questions and answer but um a quick disclaimer know that I am not an interview I am not part of the recruitment agent and I'm not part of the interviewer for any nhs trust this is just based on my own personal experience as i have attended lots of interviews and i just want to put this information out there for you to all to know so i am not a recruiter i do not work with the recruitment team and i'm not part of the interviewer of any nhs trust but i have attended lots of interviews and this interview questions and answer are just based on my own experience and my personal findings so thank you so i'm just going to give an overview of how nhs media free in interview questions are they are basically two um in two categories as i have proved them so they have some questions that Regardless of how you answer them, you are going to pass the interview. And there are some questions that you need to have the knowledge of how middle free is being practiced in the UK for you to be able to answer them. So those questions are actually based on, you are being assessed based on the standard of middle free practice in the UK. For instance, I'm going to just list the two types of questions. Example of the two type of question so the first type of question a question that has to do with like for instance asking what is your journey so far as a midwife what occasion did you advocate for someone and what did you do what will you say if you have done a course of you know in what you will you say you have done in the course of your uh, practice you know so all these questions, these type of questions are questions that regardless of how you answer them, there's high patient probability that you're going to pass the question because they are just based on your personal experience and your, your, there's no a kind of standard way of asking that kind of question. It's just like you selling yourself to the employer. So if you have that kind of, there are some trust that give that kind of question and in so, most trusts, they have that kind of question and they combine it with other type of question. So the other kind of questions are professional questions, like what will you do if you are attending to a patient and this happens? So they are just questions that assess your ability to safely practice middle free in the UK. So I've listed in this in our section, I'm just going to be answering five questions. So I'm going to be having several every episode on this topic. So this aspect, I'm going to, in this video, which is my first episode, I'm just going to answer five questions. So the first question is, how will you perform a professional duty of candor? So this question, it can also come like this, that you are attending to a patient and you administer, um, you administer a medication that was not duly prescribed or or by the doctor so after giving the medication you find out that the doctor did not sign the medication what will you do or you are supposed to administer um let me see one well, a medication okay you are supposed to administer 
one gram of keptrazone to a patient, but you administer 1,200 of keptrazone. You, like, you are supposed to administer one gram of keptrazone to a patient, but you did not check the particular, you mistakenly administer one to what will you do? Or the medication is due for 2 p.m., you will mistakenly to administer it at um, 12 p.m., what will you do? So that question is the same thing as how will you perform a professional duty of conduct? Conduct. So when they ask you that kind of question, the answer is you will tell the patient, you will go back to the patient and tell the patient what you have done wrong. And you will apologize and also explain to her how you will re rectify it. Basically, simple. So if they ask you, how would you perform a professional duty of conduct? I'm going to say, I will go back to the patient, explain to the patient what I have done done wrong and how I'm going to rectify the patient and apologize for the patient uh, to the patient uh, for the inconvenience and answer the patient question. So if they ask you how would you perform a professional duty of conduct, you tell them that you are going to go back to the patient, tell apologize, uh, tell her what you have done wrong, apologize. Uh, for that and tell her how you are going to rectify it and also make sure you answer any question that she has regarding that so that's how you will answer that question so the number two question i'm going to answer here is you are attending to a woman in labor and her bitter heart rate drops suddenly to 100 beats per minute what will you do most of the time this type of questions usually bring, um, bring another type of question, basically. So, let me just answer it straight. Again, get the question. You are attending to a woman in labor, and a fetal heart rate suddenly drop to 100 beats per minute. What will you do? So, you will identify that this is fetal by the cardiac, but you are going to inform your senior midwife and reposition her because this can happen if um, she's not rightly positioned especially if she's on ctg so you're going to reposition her to left lateral position and you're going to inform your senior midwife you are going to recheck the fhl in five minutes like you're going to recheck the fhl if she's on x um if it's on CTG, you wait for like, just look at it for like five minutes and why you already inform your senior midwife and explain the situation to the woman now that the fetal heart rate has just dropped. Then you also confirm if she's have her, if the um, membranes are still intact. You add, you confirm if the membrane are still, are still intact because after dropping, fetal heart rate could be as a result of uh, abrosal, uh, abrosal placenta or um, what is it? Placenta, cord prolapse, cord prolapse, yes. Could be as a result of cord prolapse, which is the common cause of sudden fetal bradycardia in labor is cord prolapse. So you're going to confirm if the membrane are still intact. If the membrane have ruptured, you may need to do um, to check the uh, vaginal or the cervix to see if there is if it's core prolapse. So when I was giving this kind of question, then they now asked me that. So I told them when I was giving this kind of question, I had um I told them I'm going to inform my senior midwife and reposition her and recheck in like five minutes time. If there is still vital bradycardia, I'm going to give um like hydrate the woman, give eye flow or give oxygen and give crystal solution, which is basically what you will do. But then I asked me that you check the uh you do perform a type of vaginal examination, you find out that the cord is on the it's visible at the vulva so that is 
you will identify the, patient, the situation as cord prolapse and cord prolapse is an obstetric emergency so you pull the emergency bell then you try to reposition the woman so i'm saying another question answering another question basically now which is management of cord prolapse basically that's what i'm answering answering now so management of cord prolapse cord prolapse is an emergency so you identify that it is an emergency you inform the woman it is an emergency and you are going to pull the emergency buzzer now so you put the emergency buzzer for people to come in and assist you you leave your uh you can reposition the woman to the lumbar position or to all four position the aim is just to relieve pressure from the cord you can you can manually relieve pressure from the cord by going in and lifting up the presenting part to prevent pressure on the cord then you the another thing is to fill the bladder with normal saline that's like the 500 mix of normal saline to use to fill the bladder to to prevent uh pressure on the cord and that can cause pressure on the cord to prevent pressure on the cord basically then you can also soak the cord in the uh in the kind of wet saline solution to soak the cord in wet saline solution to prevent cord prolapse uh, why to prevent cord spasm while they are being uh preparing the theater for emergency cesarean section depending on the stage of the pre uh, labor if delivery is eminent if there is full cervical dilatation already and delivery is eminent you attend delivering the baby uh, vaginally if delivery is not eminent you prepare for cesarean section so the aim is to get the baby out in less than 30 minutes like in within 15 minutes of identifying the emergency and you continue monitoring the fetal arteries <laughs> you may have to listen to this again to the question uh to the video again to get it i think i've just said everything regarding if you have been asked in an interview that a woman you are attending to in labor and uh in labor a fetal artery suddenly draw to 100 bit per minute, what will you do? The first thing is to re reposition the women to know if the this stop will increase and reposition the uh, if she's on CTG, reposition it as well. Reposition her if you check check in like you can you inform your senior midwife as well. Then you confirm if the uh, membrane is still intact. If the membrane is still inside, you rule out cord prolapse. If cord prolapse is being confirmed, you are not finding that it is an obstetric emergency. You call for additional help. Then you reposition the woman to trend the lumbar position or all four position or semi exaggerated seams lateral position. So basically, you are putting the woman in a position that can relieve pressure on the cord. You leave your hand there to lift the pressure on the uh, the pressure of the presenting part part on the cord and you will not remove your hand until the baby is being delivered then you fill the bladder with 500 ml of normal saline and also you soak the cord if the cord is visible outside you soak it in saline solutions to prevent cord spasm i actually feel this interview quite interview where i was asked this question because i did not mention filling the bladder with normal saline that is why i filled the interview uh, the interview where i have i had this question so please take note of that and the trust where i had this question from is still actively recruiting so they might still ask this question again try as much as possible to take note of that so the next question i'm going to answer now is what did you understand by saving baby's life bundle so that's the question so saving baby's life bundle is a new agent is a new thing that is being introduced to ensure uh, to increase the life expectancies of babies and to prevent or reduce the event of uh stillborn or 
fetal uh, neonatal death basically so in saving uh, the elements of saving baby bundle include reducing smoking in pregnancy and the aim is uh, uh it has been um like according to research there is with smoking in pregnancy there is increased risk of small for gestational age babies and small for gestational ba a baby uh, age babies are at more risk of stillbirth or neonatal death then another aspect of it is risk assessments and surveillance of fetal growth restriction it means that uh like risk assessment of all pregnant women doing antenatal clinic to identify babies that are at risk of fetal growth restriction the raising awareness of re reducing fetal movement has to do with telling um educating her mom to report any changes in their fetal movement like if whenever they experience anything they feel is like a kind of reduced movement and you let mom know that um fetal movement does not decrease with age and there's no really standard way of saying this is a uh that the number of times a baby should move in utero so each baby are individual like they are spe specific and they have a way of moving so whenever the mom identifies that oh this baby is having it the way this baby is moving has reduced to the way it was before the mom should uh, escalate it to the to their midwife then another thing is effective monitoring of effective fetal monitoring during labor so those are the components of saving babies life bundle so when they ask you what did you understand by saving babies life life bundle saving babies life bundle is a it's designed to tackle still birth and early neonatal birth and the elements include reducing smoking in pregnancy risk assessment and surveillance for fetal growth restriction raising awareness of reduced fetal movement and effective fetal monitoring during labor so you will explain how or what each of these elements can help reduce the uh, if, um the rate of still birth and neonatal death so that's how to answer that question the next question i'm going to answer i think i've answered three so the number four question is what did you understand by ctg so if you have been asked this question and in an interview and you are in a country that you do not use CTG like Nigeria. So you let them know that we do not use CTG in our country. However, I understand that CTG is an equipment that is used to monitor fetal um, uh, heart during labor and fetal well-being. It is used during labor and is usually attached to uh, the woman tummy, you know, the woman tummy during labor. It is used to, uh, they are like, they have like five elements that the CTG chair. So in CTG, so there is a, uh, the CTG check the fetal heart rate and also it check the fetal, uh, the variability, fetal heart rate variability, if there is fetal, uh, deceleration in the fetal heart rate and if there is acceleration in the fetal heart rate and also check the contraction so let me come again they said what did you understand by ctg so ctg is an equipment that is used to monitor fetal well-being so ctg can be used in labor and it can be used in antenata so during antenata cleaning it is just used to it is also used to assess the fetal well-being and it's um the women will have the CTG for a certain number of minutes and they, are, they will remove it if it is fine and the woman will go home. So using CTG in labor, it is just also used to assess the fetal well-being and how the baby is coping with the labor. Because labor is stressful, so the CTG is used to assess if the baby is coping well with labor or there is need for action. So 
in CTG interpretation, there is um there is, there are elements of CTG that you need to check elements like things you need to check during a CTG interpretations. It includes the fetal heart rate, um, the fetal var heart rate variability. That's variability. Then fetal heart rate if there is any deceleration. You are checking if there is any acceleration on the fetal heart rate and if there is uh, the rate of contraction. So the CTG has to uh, probe. So the one for the tocograph, that's for the contraction and the one for the um, heart rate, that's cardio tocograph. The name of the CTG. So there's another question there's another aspect which is uh, CTG interpretation. So definitely, that is another question. So if they ask you that, what you, what did you understand with CTG or by CTG? So CTG is a um is an electronic machine. That's the full meaning of CTG is cardiotocograph. So it's a is a machine. It's an electronic machine that is used to monitor fetal well-being in labor. Basically, I just answer that. So, if they want you to say more about it, they will construct another question. So, for this question, what did you understand by CTG? CTG is an electronic machine. The full meaning of CTG is cardiosocograph. It is used to monitor fetal well being during labor and antenatally. Garcia. So, there's another question on how to interpret CTG. So, that one is, is another question. Question. I'm not going to that today. So the fifth question, which is the last question I'm going to answer on this um, video, is a woman insists on body bottle feeding. What will you do? Now, in the UK, women have the right to choose whatever they want. You know, they have the right to make their own choice and their own decision. So if a woman insists on bottle feeding, what will you do? What we do is just to support her wish during the bottle feeding. You support her. So, however, you explain the benefit of breast milk to her. So, if she wants to bottle feed, so is she giving the baby formula or she's giving the baby breast milk? So, if she wants to give the baby breast milk, you support her in uh, in expressing the breast milk into cup or into bottle to give the baby. So, you support her in her decision. That is it. A woman insists on bottle feeding. What will you do? You support her with her decision and you give her all the support and guidelines, guidance that she needs. After, don't forget that you need to fully explain the benefits of breastfeeding to her. Of breast me. You ex explain the benefits of breast me to her. And you ask if she would like to express, if she's giving express breast milk or formula. So if she wants to give breast milk, you support her in her expressing her breast milk into the cup or something. Then if she's giving formula, you tell you support her with that. You tell her how to prepare formula, safe way of preparing preparing the formula, and you give her uh, links or flyers regarding uh, bottle feedings. So there are a lot of flyers. So you give her flyers regarding bottle feeding and you also tell her where to read more on bottle feeding. So basically, that is the end of this section, which is the first episode of middle field interview questions and answer. So if you love this and you want me to do more, please kindly say that in the comment section. So thank you for watching my video and I wish you all the best.